While everyone seemed focused on both John Ross and Saquon Barkley yesterday, Jordan Davis might have spilled the beans on the biggest difference between Vic Fangio's defense and Sean Desai's defense in 2023, Plus, here why Nolan Smith's mindset has changed in year two. Now, Paris Campbell plans to win the wide receiver three spot. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. Now, we've all seen the main highlights from the Eagles' second OTA practice yesterday, but while it was all happening, Howie's GM brilliance got put back on full display when the Miami Dolphins gave their number two wide receiver, Jalen Waddell, a three-year, $84.75 million contract extension that includes $76 million guaranteed per sources. That deal makes Waddle one of the league's top five highest paid receivers. And Waddle now slides into officially number four on the list of the most expensive pass catchers in the entire NFL, right above Devontae Adams there at $28.25 million. But more importantly, he's a whole three and a quarter million dollars a year more expensive than our Devontae Smith. And while their career stats are nearly identical, as PFN's Anthony DeBona pointed out yesterday, Waddle is somehow going to receive $25 million more in guaranteed money than Smitty got on his deal just a few weeks ago. And it just shows why Howie Roseman is the best GM in the National Football League. Getting your guys paid, making sure they're happy, but doing it weeks before everybody else means the price is way lower for you, and it's way higher for everybody else. We're looking at you, Dallas, and CeeDee Lamb. And the bow on top of all of this was the fact that Devontae Smith was on WIP yesterday to talk about his charity softball game, but also to heap praise on the Eagles organization. Uh, I think the main thing is uh, I feel like I'm in one of the top tier organizations. Um, you know, Howie, Mr. Leary, um, you know, they, they take care of us. Um, you know, anytime you're in the building, you feel like your family, you don't feel like you're just going to work. Um, you're actually, you know, having fun when you're in the building. It's not just go to work and then just go home. You enjoy being around those guys. And um, the relationships I've, I've built in the city, um, I mean, I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. By the way, on that charity softball game happening in Allentown at the end of June, I got word we're going to have more tickets to go ahead and give away next week. So subscribe and stay tuned for that because I'm going to try to help more of you guys be able to go to that event for free. Oh, and Wolf 197 you got to let me know by Monday if you want to claim the Jalen Carter t-shirt giveaway because I haven't heard from you yet. I don't hear from you by Monday. We're going to select a new person, so if you haven't subscribed yet, that's how you make sure you're still entered. Now, speaking of wide receivers, John Ross really started to turn some heads yesterday with reporters impressed by not only his first interview with the media, but also his quickness and speed on the football field. And it really is starting to feel like the Eagles' wide receiver three spot will come down to Paris Campbell and John Ross. Now, nothing against the rookies. Maybe a nice Smith, when he gets in the football field, kind of outperforms them. But right now, it's clearly those two. Although Paris Campbell did seem to hint during his press conference that he thinks it will be a one-on-one -on -one match between him and John Ross, and he's ready to compete. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can look, up, look out there on the field, man, and um, flying around trying to make plays. And, uh, you know, for me... Um, and I'm sure John as well. Like every time you're on the field, you just want to put that speed on tape. Um, no matter if you're the number one read in the play or the last read in the play, you always just want to put that speed, uh, you know, on tape. And obviously the quarterbacks to see that, the coaches to see that, and, you know, Hopefully more opportunities come from that. Oh, it was also kind of fun to hear Campbell give a little insight on how Nick Sirianni has changed from being on the offensive staff with Campbell in Indianapolis versus now being with Campbell as the Eagles head coach. Uh, no, I get that. I get asked that question a lot. And, um, that's the only thing I can say about Nick. Like, he's the same person uh, from the first day I met him to now. Um, no matter what his job title is, like, he's, he's the exact same person every single day. And um, you, you got to respect that, especially, you know, when a guy moves up in the ranks, for sure. Now, the start of the day on defense yesterday for me was Jordan Davis. Not because of anything he did in the football field, because it's hard to judge defensive linemen based on performances without pads, which is why, obviously, Isaiah Rogers got a ton of praise, and rightfully so. He was fantastic. But Jordan Davis's press conference was something new. Like, I think we heard a completely different player who knows that it's now up to him to step up with Fletcher Cox being gone. Definitely. I'll be able to answer the call. I know it's required of me. I know Vic is leaning on me. I know the D-line leaning on us um so I definitely think that I'll be able to handle it that's what I'm working for um nobody's coming to save us now so um you know we got to put the load on our backs and um that's coming from you know me Jalen Carter Milton Williams Marlon it's just everybody um we got we got more that's suspected of us so we have to go out there and show it Still, though, despite that answer, it was Davis's answer to a question about what is different now under new defensive coordinator Vic Fangio versus what it was like under Sean Desai in 2023. Listen to this. Fourth defensive coordinator in three years. How is he different personally than the other guys you've had? No. There's no. And I hope y'all can believe that out. But, um, like, it's really no BS with him. It's straight ball. Um, 
You know, some people like it for better or for worse. I play with all types of coaches um, from high school, college. I mean, <laughs> Kobe Smart's the worst of the worst, so not the worst of the worst, but he's, I mean, you know, you're going to eat. He's old school. You get what it's suspected on. You know it's a job to do. You got to do your job. If you don't do it, then it's a, it's a miss. So, um, you know, it's even from, like, Coach Clint, like, detail-oriented. If we mess up on the details, we got to go again. And it's not just saying, like, you know, you getting that extra rep. You're just doing it just to do it. You're doing it for improvement. You're doing it to make sure that you get it down. You get it right. And um, if we get it right, I mean, you do it light. If you do it wrong, you do it long. So it's either one way to do it, and that's just to do it correctly. No more BS. Like, officially, no more BS on defense, which we all kind of knew was happening last year under the failed leadership of Desai and then Matt Patricia. But it's so refreshing to hear a defensive player actually mention it. Like, sure, maybe the Dolphins players all hated the no BS policy of Vic Fangio, or maybe they're really, really soft. I can assure you, though, the Eagles defenders are hungry for it. And after the disaster of last season, this is exactly what they want and definitely need it. Oh, and as far as Jordan Davis, not just being kind of a big body to stop the run, he gave a really interesting answer when a reporter asked him, can you actually rush the passer this year? Seems like Clint Hurt, the newly signed defensive line coach, is really emphasizing Davis's pass rush moves. As a pass rusher, how are you now compared to the past two offseasons? As a pass rusher, how are you now compared to the past two offseasons? I'm improving, and I'm loving it. Um... Even now, it's just um, knowing the detail. Like I said, Coach Clint, man, he's all about the details. He always on that. Um, we spend a lot of time, and even just us as players, we spend a lot of time after practice. Like um, the reason why I'm here late is because, uh, like a couple of the D line, we stay out there 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes after everybody goes in. We call it breakfast club, but we're really late. But you know, we just spend the time. Just working on our crowd, working on – and that's not us going 100%. We're not going full throttle, but it's just making sure that you get them hands right. You stab, lift, and you make sure that you work them swipes, and you want to make sure that you – just little detail, little nuances that come with it. And um, if you're doing it in the group, you know, it started out with just two. Now it's like three, four, five. So, you know, um, I guess going to you in terms of the leadership, you know, it's not really a set leader. But, you know, we try to lead by example. We try to pull everybody along. We always have a saying – uh, I can't climb if my brother's falling. So if everybody else is getting better, then we getting better as a unit. Now listen, Jordan Davis gets a lot of criticism, and rightfully so. I mean, we're two years in, and he's been very, I mean, I guess average for a former first-round draft pick the Eagles moved up in order to get. But the numbers do say, and the numbers never really lie here, that the year one to year two jump was pretty significant. I mean, Davis went from zero sacks to two and a half sacks in year one, and from 18 tackles in year one to 45 combined. Still, though, the Bears' defense needs Davis to not just be good. They need him to be really, really good. Like, he needs to be the same beast that anchored that UGA defense all those seasons ago. And if Davis can go from, you know, being average to being not only a run stopper, but also give you four to six sacks as a defensive tackle, Eagle fans, including myself, will dramatically shift their view on him going into year three. Oh, and by the way, it wasn't just Davis who seemed refreshed by the new coaching staff. How about Nolan Smith, who's always just a great listen at the podium, echo his love for Fangio and the new defensive scheme? What are your first impressions of, of Vic? And, you know, people talk about his old school mentality. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I come from coaches like that. Like, you know, a lot of people say the Bama family tree. No, it's the Georgia family tree. Nah. So from the Georgia family tree, you know, those tough coaches that want you to push a little bit extra, give me a little bit more, and I expect more from you. That's what I want you to expect more from me, and that's what Coach Wash pushed me to that point. Like, Coach Wash expects a lot from me, and I expect a lot from myself, and he constantly, Coach Wash pushed me day in and day out that it ain't no problem to work for Coach Vic. I think everybody agrees the Eagle offense is going to cook this year. Like, there's no way you have two superstar receivers, a superstar running back, an offensive line still packed full of pro bowlers, Jalen Hurts, and now Kellen Moore, and you don't score 25-plus points a game. Like, sure, they're going to have their struggles early, but I think overall, the offense is going to be fantastic. The real question for the Philadelphia Eagles in 2024 is, can Nick Sirianni lead as a head coach, which, again, remains to be seen, and will the defense be competent? Will they not be soft? Will they not give up, you know, 27-plus receiving touchdowns to wide receivers? And if Vic Fangio can make them a top 10 defense instead of a top 25 defense, Philadelphia goes from one of the favorites in the NFC to very clearly the favorite in the NFC that a lot of other teams are going to be terrified to play, especially with their 21st hardest schedule in the NFL. We have plenty more stuff happening the next couple of days and weeks, including this weekend, my interview I just finished recording with Brandon Lee Gowton, the managing editor of Bleeding Green Nation, who was at the Eagles OTA practice yesterday, and he gave me a ton of really good insight that a lot of reporters just missed or weren't really covering on Twitter or even us constantly. 
content creators miss. So stay tuned for that. Hit the sub button notification bell. That'll go live Saturday or Sunday with also details on how you can go ahead and enter to win a new pair of tickets to Devontae Smith's charity softball game. So trying to give you guys as many giveaways as possible. So stay tuned for that. I'm Thomas Mott hanging out on Friday. This has been the Thomas Mott Show. Yeah.